Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin today, Monday, October 15th, 2012. My website is ggnonline.com. On YouTube, it's ddarko2012. My channels are in ddarko2013. So we left off um, talking about uh, the European Union, right? And how they were banning broadcasts of Iranian TV channels. Um, also, we have what? A uh, former Soviet dissident warning about an EU dictatorship coming. And then you have the EU uh, getting a Nobel Peace Prize. But it says here, this year's Nobel Peace Prize was granted to the EU for its relentless contribu uh, contribution to the advancement of peace and reconciliation, democracy, and human rights in Europe. The conditions set out in Alfred Nobel's will have been twisted upside down. The will is crystal clear, saying that the five prizes are to be granted to persons. And the EU Nobel Peace Prize is more farcical than Obama's. So the EU has been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in what uh, can only be described as a travesty and a complete farce. It's just another one of those sad moments in the decline of Western civilization. So I'm talking about Obama's Nobel Peace Prize. Since the award three years ago, Obama has presided over a grisly few years in Afghanistan, kept Guantanamo Bay open, invested in drone warfare and extrajudicial killings, and also... Uh, through his failure to assert a uh, dominant foreign policy allow the Middle East to become even more unpredictable for the U.S. and wider world. They say there's a trend that's increasing. Talking about the Nobel Peace Prize is uh, basically delegitimizing itself and frankly acting as nothing more than a public relations firm for left-leaning individuals and institutions. Which makes sense. That's why they got it, right? Because uh, we were just talking about how the uh, EU is heading towards a nice communist dictatorship. But uh, this is crazy, because remember what happened. Nobel Committee asked Obama nicely to return his peace prize. So the chairman of the Nobel Peace uh, Prize Committee said today, well, this isn't today, but that Obama really ought to consider returning his Nobel Peace Prize medal immediately, including the really nice case that came in. He was, uh, he was flanked by four members of the committee who agreed with him and said that um, they never asked for it uh, from people like a war criminal Henry Kissinger, but that the 10% drawdown in U.S. troops in Afghanistan that the president announced last week can't buy a period of non-peace prize winner type behavior in 2011. Guantanamo still open, the bombing of Libya, the blowing bin Laden away rather than putting him on trial. Now a few U.S. troops to go home, but the U.S. will be occupying Afghanistan until 2014 and beyond, and he says, don't even get me started on Yemen. So that was from the commission there. EU plans new sanctions on Iran's banking, shipping sector. So this is like almost every week now. Israeli foreign minister says not imposing sanctions like appeasing Hitler. They said previously the sanctions had only targeted certain types of transaction with, the, with Iran, but the new rules, if approved, would ban essentially all transactions. And something that I've covered before, just a side note, is what West cold-blooded sanctions, they target the civilians. So that's who they always target and punish, not the actual leaders. And the people, well, they don't have any power over it. So, you know, it's just like it's, it's punishing uh, the people who have no responsibility for any of the actions of their government. Then we have this euro collapse could lead to war in Europe. A business secretary, Vince Cable, has warned that Europe could be plunged into war if the euro was to collapse. And I've covered this before about Britain preparing for a possible collapse as well. And something else that I saw, too, uh, running on uh, alternative news sites, race riots if Obama loses. So... Uh, it says here that the KABC talk show host Larry Elder interviews one of America's greatest living thinkers, Thomas Sowell, who predicts race riots if Obama loses. So I heard that, and then I heard this. Coke Industries, other CEOs warn employees of layoffs if Obama's reelected. So kind of just some crazy, baseless uh, accusations and, and, and stuff going on out there, fear-mongering about how oh, there's going to be riots if Obama uh, doesn't get reelected. And if Obama's reelected, you're going to lose your job. You know what I mean? So it's just complete nonsense. I mean, think about it. Uh, I, I don't think Americans are, uh, have the, the fortitude uh, to be able to get away from, pull away from the couch or the movie theater or the football games to actually incite a riot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's say run out of tickets or something like that or at a football game. I, I just don't see it happening like a political riot. Iran accused of, unless of course it's it's uh, it's a uh, it's co-opted and it's fomented by by a certain type of entity. 
Iran accused of plotting Gulf oil spill to punish Quest for sanctions by poisoning the Gulf. So, again, let me, re let me say this again because this is how ridiculous this is. Iran accused of plotting Gulf oil spill to punish West for sanctions by poisoning the Gulf. And this has been leaked by Western intelligence agencies, so you know it's the truth. The plan was codenamed Dirty Water and first reported in German news magazine Der Spiegel was reported reportedly intended to punish the West for imposing the sanctions. And so here we go with some more propaganda. An electromagnetic pulse EMP attack uh, the other Iranian nuclear threats was another threat. The EMP. Remember, I told you that you got to be you got to be worrying that they're gonna Iranians and their guard are gonna come and get you in your bed in the middle of the night. Some experts say Tehran may be preparing for an EMP strike, which could fry electrical grids. Oh, so then you're gonna lose um, all of your shows and stuff like that. And I think too, that's why it's like when people ask me about the crap hitting a fan, it's like I kind of welcome it and I kind of look forward to it. And I think that if we ever going to actually have some kind of change uh, like uh, the Catalonians and Spain had, we're gonna, it's going to have to be some kind of crisis. But, uh, you know, like I said about co-opting, uh, there's opportunity for, for real freedom and a chance for people to be free. And like this this new show that I was over at my family members this uh, like a week ago, and they're show, oh, revolution, you'll like it, you'll like it. I didn't like it. I watched like the show and I just right away my mom noticed with me too that uh, we both noticed it. My sister was like, "What?" <laughs> and like, well, they're promoting all this feminine girl power crap, just like Hunger Games. I know Hunger Games. Everyone says how great it is, but it's like it's all I see, right? But uh, what they don't talk about is the is the communities, right? It's all it's all about the communities that are formed during this uh, um, chance of a uh, crisis and stuff like that. So I don't think the elites want to do that. I don't think they want to pull and fry the grids because I don't think, I think Americans have, and, and people in general now have been so conditioned, um, to this new way of life, modern, quote, modern civilization that if they did pull the plug, um, uh, people might actually <laughs> might start to like what they have. So, you know, that's what I'm coming to figure out now. Uh, Iran denies role in cyber attacks on oil and gas companies in Gulf and welcomes probe. They denied any role in the recent cyber attacks against oil and gas companies in the Persian Gulf and said they welcome any kind of investigation. Next up, we have new Senate to push pledge for unconditional support for Israeli preventative war on Iran. Get this. Senator Lindsey Graham of South, uh, South Korea, South Carolina, he's a neocon, is planning to press the Senate next month to pledge U.S. troops, money, and political support to Israel should Bibi Net, uh, Netanyahu launch a preventative war on Iran. He claims that his effort would merely take, make explicit that the U.S. has Israel's back. So we pretty much already, they pretty much already have like an unquestionable support by the U.S. taxpayer, but they want more. So it says, this is what he said. He said, but when your friend is drunk, you don't hand them the keys. If Graham ha has his way, he will hand Bibby the keys and lend him our car while the rest of us ride shotgun. So there's some, uh, some truth to that analogy or description. Next up, Israel's or Israelis attack olive trees during harvesting season, kind of interesting, because this is an olive tree, like a, extending the olive, olive branch about peace. So these people, this is their livelihoods. It says here in the village of uh, the East Ramallah, Israeli settlers cut down 300 olive trees just before the olive harvest. The attack was carried out in early hours of the morning at pre-dawn, right? It says, according to sources, while it's under guard of Israeli soldiers, Israeli settlers have attack an olive grove in the West Bank village and cause extensive damage to the area. Settlers frequently attack the Palestinian farmers in their groves and with the olive harvest season approaching, there are fears of growing violence in the region. There also is on the Temple Mount a lot of violence. There's actually attacks going on inside there in a mosque and that, so um, it's kind of getting heated there. Uh, Pakistan freed of anti-terrorism obligations so the U.S. billions will flow instead. The Obama regime has refused for the first time to declare that Pakistan is making progress towards ending the military spot for the Islamic military and groups, preventing a cut, blah, 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 right? But even so, Clinton has informed Congress that she waived legal restrictions that would have blocked some $2 billion military aid to Pakistan. This is why the drone strikes will never cease, right? So they got to get that puppet government out of there in Pakistan, the $165 million pledge for Arab Spring Endowment Fund. So editors note, so instead of U.S. aid finding or funding color revolutions in post-Soviet states and rent mobs will be established in Arab nations and develop banks in these new democracies will be built. So this is a, this is a basically a fund 
It's its own little slush fund for color revolutions. That's like starting a fire in the hopes that the fire will clear out the undesirables while leaving the environment intact. Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Qatar, Kuwait, UAE will be crossed off the list for democratizing, right, as they are perfect examples of democracy and human rights. A dangerous game is being played in a dangerous region, and the fallout will lead to more trouble for Arab families just trying to survive. So this is crazy. I mean, it's so obvious, isn't it, that Saudi Arabia and Qatar and all these places that are, uh, that are supporting the Syrian uprising and regime change, they're the most dictatorial countries in the world. <laughs> New poll finds shifts in U.S. public opinion towards the Middle East. The attacks on the U.S. embassies in Libya, Egypt last month shocked and scared Americans, but the majority of Americans nonetheless recognized that violence was the work of extremist minorities and not the majority of the population, according to the new poll. U.S. Muslim leader says the anti-Islam propaganda boomeranged on the Zionists. He says it's launched in every arena, the books, the magazines, the television, the radio, and now billboards and placards and subways and what have you. So he says that all this propaganda has been launched against us from the Quran burning to the Fitna movies. Uh, it, it, accuse, it causes the people of America to want to read the Quran more and find out basically more about it. To Yemen, remember this? Uh, Yemen security chief at U.S. Embassy killed in Sana. We never heard about this, right? Just about Libya? But Yemen security officials say a gunman has assassinated the Yemeni chief of security at the U.S. Embassy in Sana. So it's kind of a big deal. So right after, 1014, says about 106 U.S. tanks delivered to Yemen. This is from Aslawanet. Uh, dot net. So about 106 tanks were delivered to Yemen's defense ministry. Sources say about 12 armored vehicles were also brought to Yemen to protect the U.S. Embassy. About 50 Marines were sent to Sana'a to protect the U.S. Embassy in particular after reports were published about the collusion of the Central Security Forces with the protesters. Yeah, actually, it was pretty bad. The Yemeni protesters stormed the U.S. Embassy around September 13th after the Libya thing in the Mohammed film. Impatient eugenicists are tightening the screws on Yemen from October 15th. Go check it out from ExplosiveReports.com. German Development Bank and UN Population Division accelerate depopulation policies in Yemen. Last week, the United Nations Fund, UNEPA, Population Fund, has committed a program ensuring that their demand for population reduction in Yemen is being realized double quick, granting 8 million euros for this new uh, eugenics budget. The director, the director of the German bank says that these new funds will assist the Yemeni government implementing much-needed projects to make sure that every pregnancy is wanted and every childbirth is safe in Yemen. Here's, I just covered all this this uh, on Friday about eugenics and how they use that term. Uh, we want to reduce infant mortality, right? In other words, they want to reduce um, lives from being born. U.S.-led airstrike kills three children in southern Afghanistan. Two boys and a girl were collecting fire were killed in an airstrike in Afghanistan. The U.S. claims its airstrikes target militants, but local sources say civilians have been the main victims of attacks. Our Armenian politician warns of forces seeking orange revolution, says that the chairman believes that the major cause of the political wrangling in Armenia lies in foreign policy. A similar attempt to carry out such a revolution failed in 2008. So the chairman of the Constitutional Law Union says this would meet the West interests, which is probably behind it. Armenia is an important geopolitical location, which is the reason for the regime change in that. So to gain control of this location, the West has selected a new puppet. According to him, this new puppet in the aim is to enact the Libyan scenario. That is, changing power in the country by means of civil war and establishing the political forces that would serve their interests. Wow, so just like how uh, Russia kicked out U.S. aid, he also intends to propose a bill on foreign agents as our state is obviously under threat. France proposes UN resolution backing international force to help oust rebels in Mali's north. Recolonization, like I talked about, and undoing the results of their own actions of, you know, funding and that uh, of these terrorists. And in this sluggish economy, officials are saying the U.S. Department of Defense seeks a small footprint in Africa, focusing on maintaining the small footprint on the continent that is flexible and low cost. Of course, this and Ethiopia are the places where they carry out these drone strikes. That's where they originate from. U.S. assassination drone strike kills 29 in South Somalia after what? After the Al-Shabaab killed 24 Somali troops, or tit for tat. And Asian powers doubled defense spending in a decade. China in particular rose from 20% in 2000 to 40% in 2011. Also, China's currency hits a record high. Japanese and U.S. are mulling a exercise or drill in which they would uh, take over a remote island from foreign forces. I wonder who they could be. And we need CISPA to avert a cyber Pearl Harbor, says Leon Panetta. But the American and British governments knew down to the day of the coming Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Shanghai's priests and nuns are being subjected to brainwashing. 
re-educate them to make sure that their service to the nation is true. Much like the Tibetan monks patriotic re-education. 55th Tibetan monk self-immolates. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.